Hello and welcome back to a job I didn't expect to do this soon. Oh yeah, and welcome back to my garage. Last week I did replace the CV joints on my girlfriend's car and the car was driving fine, but my girlfriend had some issues with something else I need to fix on a video. I did took the car for a drive and I concluded that the clutch was shot. I did know that uh, the clutch wasn't that good anymore, but it was, uh, if I drive, drove it in third gear and just hammer it with all the 75 horsepower it has, well, maybe 50 now, but that's another story. Uh, it just starts slipping. So I need to replace the clutch. I have mentioned in previous uh, videos that the gearbox is, well, not very refined. Let's, let it call it like that. So I wanted to change the clutch and the gearbox, but I didn't get a gearbox in time. So let's call this a rehearsal job. I am going to replace the gearbox in somewhere in the future if I get a one, but for now this really has to uh, be changed. Of course you don't only uh, replace the, the plates, also the clutch cover of pressure plate and the bearing. I also bought one of these main seals because the engine is leaking. I know, I know, I need to rebuild this engine or get another engine for this. But the engine is leaking and most of the time one of the things that's leaking is the main seal. So I, at least I'm going to replace. Uh, this is a clutch kit from SAS. In my opinion, SAS made the best stock clutches you can get. Faleo is a good second, at least for, uh, well, European cars and uh, SAS. It's just the brand, but again, that's my opinion. Also, these weren't that expensive. I believe I paid maybe 60 or 70 US dollars, something like that for the whole kit. The only thing, it never happens to me. There wasn't an alignment tool. Every time I buy a clutch from SAS, at least I get an alignment tool, but this time, nope. So I don't have an alignment tool for this clutch. So this is going to be fun. I already started the disassembly of the car. I removed the drive shafts. If you want to know how to remove them, just watch my other video on replacing the drive shafts or CV joints. Then uh, that I will link somewhere here. Uh, so I don't want to bore you with that. So I already done that. I also removed the drain plug so that the oil drains. Right now we need to unbolt the gearbox and hopefully it will come out. The system is uh, designed like that the engine and the gearbox has to drop from beneath. I really hope I can avoid uh, doing that and only, how do you want to say that, uh, tilt. Only tilt the engine a little bit so I can uh, remove the gearbox. That will be very nice if it can be done like that, but I don't know. I never removed or uh, replaced a clutch from a similar kind of vehicle. I did once for a Polo, but that was a newer car. It was That was a 9N and this car is based on, or the same base as a 6N. So there is a minor differences here and there. Also the caddy is um, roughly the same. Uh, no, the second caddy, not the first caddy. The first caddy is, uh, is a whole different kind of car. The oil is all drained, so we can uh, put back the plug. So I did uh, take a bit of a look underneath the car of all the things I need to loosen up. One of the things is the rear transmission mount. So we are going to at least remove that one. And there is a clip here. I think it's the reverse plug. 
that's out of there. Also, I'm going to remove these uh, splash shields and there is a shield right here. Well, let's first remove these uh, gear linkage. There's one here and one here right above that. Also, there is a nut on the top, so be sure to And this is the other one, and I believe that's a tenor. And hopefully we can just slide these off. That's one, and the other one has probably the other one probably needs a little bit of wiggle. Now we're going to remove this mount. Crap. Hopefully this uh, one is loose. This thing is in the way. And this is held in place with a couple of tents. And also a couple of Phillips heads. It's a bit of a miracle that these even come out. Well, I take my miracles. And now we have to do the same thing on the other side. Before we go any further, we need to remove the, the battery, or at least the negative from the battery. Before we are going to remove this mount, we are going to undo as much, much as possible from the top. Starting with, uh, hopefully you can see that. Well, there, there is the clutch cable. There is a tenor on the end there, so you don't need to unbolt it all the way, but just unbolt it a little bit. I'm sorry I don't get a better shot of this, but what I do is uh, push the lever forward and just uh, remove the cable. This is the clutch cable. As you can see there is just a nut on the back, so I just loosen it a bit up. Push the lever forward and then you can unhook this. I'm sorry I uh, couldn't get a better shot of it. Now it's time to search around the bell housing for, well, nuts and bolts. Here is one and there is also one right here that you not can see. But start with this one. Note that there is a spring uh, right here so we need to remove that there is also one right here where the clutch cable connected so be sure uh, to lose that one also So remember that the bracket goes over there. Well, this is the last bolt we can get to from the top. So the rest we have to remove from the bottom. Next up we need to install the brace. And there is an eye right beneath this plastic bit. So we need to remove that. It just held in place with a couple of Phillips head screws.
just take it off enough that the most load is on there. So when you undo the the mount, the engine doesn't do this. I can tell you by experience that you are going to shit your pants. So if you're in for a frail, eh, maybe do even do it without it. Okay, just to make myself a little bit easier, I'm going to show the bolts that I'm going to take off. This is for the starter. Um, you don't have to take it off, so you don't have to, but if you want to, well, sure. Okay, this is that big one. We need to loosen up. There is a small one right there. And there is also one right there. And there is a big one. Maybe you can see him. If I just move it out of the way. But just here. Right there. This is it. And if I'm correct, if we loosen all those up, then the gearbox is loose. Also the speedo cable is right here. Normally you can uh, just use your fingers and turn it loose. But of course this one is stuck and I don't get a plier to it. So hopefully when I drop the engine a little bit down, um, I can get to it with a plier. But just be uh, sure you unhook this one. I've got all the bolts loose, but I decide... Mm. But I decided to uh, uh, remove the starter anyway. Maybe that's uh, it saves a little bit of weight of the transmission, and also I don't have to undo all those wiring. Not that there's that many, but oh well. I decided to uh, loosen it up. It's just two bolts, two times 16 one right here above maybe you can get better from the top but and uh, one right here so. next up we are going to do uh, the uh, transmission mount and hopefully it will just come loose with just a couple of saps this is a 16 Oops. Ah! Well, the engine is now all crooked, but it is as slow as it can. Hopefully it is enough. Also be sure that you check all the hoses and stuff uh, like this. That isn't overstretching because you can tear stuff up really fast, really easy. Well, maybe a good tip. Maybe it's easier to drop the gearbox first before unbolting all the bolts. As you can see, you can get to it quite easy. Also, note that I removed the uh, speedometer or speedo cable uh, right here. So now uh, the gearbox is all loose. So also note that before I uh, uh, drop the gearbox, I put a bolt right here. Uh, it will not be the first time that the gearbox just slide off and drops on the ground. So don't do that. So be sure you always have a bolt here. But like I said, I think it is just easier to remove all the bolts when the gearbox is dropped down like this. So what I'm going to do is uh, remove the gearbox. And after that, uh, when I put it back on, I think I uh, tighten all the bolts like this. 
I don't have a transmission jack. I'm still uh, searching for one, so that's one on my shopping list. It's now just, well, hopefully, I don't make a fool of myself and just drop the gearbox on the ground. Nice view. Oh, ah, I'm glad it's not that heavy. But note that this, uh, can you see that? Yeah. This was in the way, so maybe it's uh, a good idea to remove this. So, I even smell the clutch. <laughs> yeah, it's really burnt. It's a Faleo clutch, and I think this is the stock clutch. I don't know for sure, of course, but I do think so. Well, it's a good practice to uh, remove this as a, in a cross pattern. Of course, the engine is turning. Uh, these are not that uh, tight on there. But I wanted to say is uh, it's a good practice to do it in a star pattern. And don't uh, loosen it all the way up. Of course, this uh, clutch is shot, so it isn't that important. But if you want to reuse it, then it's a good idea to uh, do it like so. It is not that it's really worn or something, it really does smell really bad. It really looks like uh, it's all glazed. So probably what's faulty is the pressure plate, that it doesn't handle the load anymore. Also there are a lot of burn marks on there. I am going to remove the flywheel. You don't have to worry about the orientation. Someone with a close eye can see that there is a space difference between these and the rest of uh, the bolt holes. So don't worry about that. The only problem is, is that I have to undo these bolts and get this off. And hopefully there is no gasket uh, underneath it. Second thought, I'm not going to touch this. I'm just going to clean it up and because I don't have the gasket for this back plate. I didn't expect it to look like, well, it looks. So, yeah, not going to touch it. It's not really leaking, as you can see. Uh, this is just from beneath and not from here. And also I need to re... I'm revisiting this in the future. In the near future probably. So, no. I'm just going to put back the flywheel and pretend it never happens. Of course the best thing to do is uh, reface the uh, flywheel. Uh, I'm not going to do that. One of the reasons is the sh shops are closed. Second reason is I wanted to do it myself, but my lathe isn't finished yet. And I don't think it's necessary on this one. What I just did is uh, just some Scotch-Brite and uh, 
just clean it all up. Uh, one thing you have to remember is when you are setting this out for a refacing, mill or a tenth of a, a tenth of a mill that they remove from here, they also have to remove from here. If you don't do that, then the clamp force on the flywheel will not be the same. So be sure that they do that. Most of the experienced machine shops out there know that, but there are a lot of um, machine shops, not engine shops, but machine shops that aren't that, not that they don't do a good job, they do, but they just don't know this stuff because, well, they're machine shops and not engine rebuild uh, shops. So be sure to, uh, to check for that. But this, I'm just going to clean it up. I know, I know what you're thinking. It's a half-assed job and well, you're right. It is. This is the clutch plate, the new one. And on there, somewhere, oh, off there, it says gearbox side. So it has to be mounted like so. And the pressure plate. If I'm correct, there's just one way it fits. But now the fun part begins because we need to align the clutch with well, the center hole. And like I said before, I don't have an alignment tool. So I have to do it on eye. I don't recommend that you do that. Get an alignment tool, but I have to because I don't have one. First of all, just secure the pressure plate with some bolts. Don't tighten them all up yet. If you have an alignment tool, then is now a good time to uh, put it in. I'm just going to snug them up. Always do that in a cross pattern. But as you can see, I just hand tie them. Well, I think uh, that's it. So now we're just snugging them up. Okay, we snug them all up and now we have to torque them down. Most of the companies supply some little bit of grease. That grease must go into uh, the splines right here. I don't know what kind of grease it is, but it looks a little bit different than, than it was on there. Okay, this is of course the gearbox. We need to install a new uh, clutch relief bearing. That's in the kit. The old one is pretty toast. I I'm just surprised I didn't notice that while driving, but oh well, it's just take out this bolt, that's a 12, and then you can just slide the whole thing forward and you can just pick it off there. There is no pin beneath here, so Hey, you know you notice that there are two holes but beneath here there is no hole only in the top side there is a or there is not a pin beneath here but there is a pin on the top side yeah don't worry about that uh, we're now going to clean it all up 
put some new grease on there and reinstall a new one. Well, the orientation doesn't matter. Slide on the top first and then just wiggle it into place. At least that, that is at least what I had in mind. It is a bit finicky, but it is in there. Now just a quick wipe of the bearing so that there is no grease on it and uh, we can put it back in the car. Okay, before I'm going to put it uh, gearbox back in the car I want to show you where you need to fill it at least the fill plug for the Felicia is right here but first you need uh, to remove the 9 mm bolt and take this off be sure that you clean it up very well you don't want uh, any dirt or other stuff getting in there and now don't drop it now it's just a matter of wiggle it out there Just be damn sure that you don't drop this gear into the gearbox. And you use this as a dipstick. I believe uh, the manual says about three to four millimeters from the bottom. So this you use also as a dipstick. It's definitely not the easiest fill plug uh, out there, but oh well. We have to deal with it. Also, be sure that you fill it up when the car is level. So. That's how the pros do it. One shot.
like I said, I'm going to uh, connect the gearbox like so. And we have a couple of specialty ones. This one, where the spring goes, connects to, goes to here. Next up, we need to uh, install this plate right there or there. Uh, sometimes you don't know the orientation. If it went like this or like this, most of the time I look for washer marks like here. So this one must go in like this instead of like so. As you can see, there are no it's a lot cleaner because it's sitting at, uh, against the tranny. So this is the way it should be installed. Next up is the, is the starter. Let me put somewhere up here. Uh, not going to fit like so. Because the cables are just too short. Maybe I can lengthen them a little bit so we can put it on there. Also, someone with spray paint has been really generous. And no, it wasn't me. Be sure that you also include or install this bracket on the top side. Sorry that you cannot see it, but... Plug back this plug, but... Yeah, we have to raise uh, the engine first for that. Okay, I'm going to try to install the clutch cable also. Hopefully we can get it on there like so. Well, before we are going to bolt the rest uh, down, we just uh, need to raise the engine back into its place. Be sure that nothing pinches or gets between something like wires and stuff. Well, the engine is now roughly into its final place. We're going to lift the car up again and tighten all the bolts beneath it. So, just for reference, you need to tighten up this, these two starter bolts of nuts. And of course, we have to put back the plug and we need to install, tighten up this one, the small one here, and there is a small one there, also that one there, that one, you need to tighten that up. And those are all the bolts from below. We're going to install this transmission mount first. Don't forget the one at the back. I have to uh, loosen that one up. I have to loosen these two up so I could get the gearbox in a lot easier. 
and removing would also be easier. So be sure you will remove this one or just loosen it up and move it out of the way. I did you show you this bolt, but I didn't show you where to remove this. And this one is from here. So we put it also back there. Well, next up are the two shift linkage. Just this one just slides on there. And you have uh, this cup that goes on here and then a bolt with a washer. Oh, forgetting something. There's also a big washer that comes in first. Then this one, and then so. Next up is the shift linkage itself. It just slides on there. Maybe it's easier to install this one first. But oh well. I did install the axles to the car again and again if you want to know how to do that then please check my other video. I am not going to install that lower belly pan or splitter thing that's mounted here. The reason why is I concluded that the radiator is leaking so I have to order one and install it in just a few days so I don't want to have the hassle to remove you're smart enough to figure out how to do that this is the setup I use to fill the tranny or transmission just a hose with well in this case it's a uh, transmission pump but I use it as a funnel right now so now that's uh, draining or filling right there yeah, I believe it takes about two and a half liters I'm using this time some castrol oil the only thing we have to do now is uh, reinstall this uh, engine mount of a transmission mount and of course re reconnect the battery I forgot to tell you that you need to install this plate and of course the nut here and a bolt over there so don't uh, forget to do that and there you have it how to change a clutch on a Skoda Felicia Fun in this case if this clutch is fine there is nothing really wrong with it of course it is a little bit warm but it is not completely dead yet so what I think is that the pressure plate didn't have the clamping force anymore to keep the clutch, well, in its place. So it starts slipping. It happens over time. Sometimes you can even see the, the fingers here just bending. But uh, that's not uh, the case here. This set wasn't that very expensive, I don't know the price exactly, but I believe it was around 70 or 80 US dollars. And uh, yeah, well, for the SAX kit of course, this one came with the car. And that's it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it or at least learned something from it. And if you did, please uh, give it a like. If you want to follow me around, you know what to do. And I will see you next time. Bye.